OK, we're on to Section 2, woodwinds. Now, nearly all woodwinds in South America and Central America are made from bamboo or other forms of hollowed cane, or they're made from carved wood or clay, that is, terracotta. And there are transverse flutes, there are straight flutes, there are pan flutes, and there are ocarinas of various kinds. We're also covering the Navajo flute, which is representing the Native American flutes in this collection. The cana. The cana is probably even better known than the pan flutes as a South American woodwind instrument. It's nearly always the highest lead line you can have. It plays the part that the violin would play if the violin was used more in South American music, I guess. It's a very piping, fluty and really strong sound, often played with quite a full vibrato. It's an end-blown notch flute, which means it's played in the same way as a Japanese shakuhachi or a Chinese xiao. But actually it's a lot louder. The tube of the bamboo is a lot wider in bore, so you get a lot of volume out of it. And it's a really fantastic instrument to carry a melody. The Canacho. OK, this is simple. The Canacho is the alto equivalent of the Cana. So it's a, a, a long bamboo flute, notch flute, as is the Cana. And the bottom note is the D, just a tone above middle C, whereas the bottom note of the Cana is the G. Both of them have a two octave and a little bit range upward from those bottom notes. Sikus. The pan flutes of South America, incredibly versatile collection of instruments coming in many, many different sizes and they cover a lot of different musical roles, uh, not just pitches, but volumes and articulations. We're essentially dealing with four sizes in this collection from the smallest, which is the chuli or chulis, and then the alto size, which is malta or maltas, and then the bass, which is toyos. We also have the really deep pipes, which are for the purposes of, of this collection called contra toyos. Now, the interesting thing about these is they can function as really sweet melodic instruments, very breathy or very sort of big and pure sounding and almost proud sounding. 
but also they function as percussive instruments, just these really sharp staccatos with a lot of breath in the sound. They've been used in many movie scores. I'm, I'm thinking, for example, Legends of the Falls used a lot of low panpipes. And, of course, the mission was full of these lovely sikus sounds. instruments are diatonic. They're normally held together in pairs because you can either separate them and have two players playing the pairs or you can hold them together and one player can zigzag across the pairs to, to create the diatonic scale. Um, we've of course separated them out and we've given the full range of the instruments. <laughs> Thank you. 
The Pink Cooler. So, it's an end blown flute like the cana, but the cana is a notch flute like the shakuhachi, whereas the pinculo is a windway flute rather like a recorder. It has the same two octave range, it's in the key of G, nearly always in the key of G, and, and the one we have here is in G. Because of the windway, the sound is very, very pure, and with the subtly different sound from the cana, I'm sure you'll notice and I'm sure you'll find alternative uses for the two instruments that, that cover the same range. The tarka. The tarka is a Bolivian flute. I don't know whether it's pre-Columbian or not, but it's strikingly like a recorder in the way that it's put together. It's actually carved from a, a large square block of wood, which, rather like a totem pole, is then carved round the outside. And uh, they have various different sizes. We have the tenor size here, and it's a slightly breathy recorder sound and it's it's very suitable for playing sort of haunting melodies things that are a little bit less pure
The Mosenio. The Mosenio covers Bolivia, Peru, Ecuador, and now down into Chile. It's a very large flute at the same pitch as an alto concert flute. In order to get this great size from the bamboo and, and have it practical to play, there is a wind way that doubles back on the instrument, a bit like in a Slovakian fujara. It makes the thing practical to play. But it, it is a wind way flute of the, of the recorder style, but the, the bamboo that's used is very thin-walled and very large so that the sound is, is very deep but very wide and it's a very haunting low sound round about the pitch of a, of a female alto voice. Often played with a very fast vibrato, you'll hear the sound of the Marsenio all over the magnificent score that Ennio Morricone wrote for the mission. Navajo flute. This flute is made from hardwood, so it's not bamboo. And uh, again, it's a windway flute. It's a very unusual design in that the windway is something that's attached to the outside of the instrument and is movable. So you can make minor adjustments to the sound. The bore of this instrument is cylindrical and so wide that it cannot overblow in, in this very much the same way that an ocarina cannot overblow, which, by which I mean that it doesn't have a falsetto. It will not give you a second octave, however hard you try. The plus side of this, however, is that the low octave is really dedicated and it's really warm, rich and wide sound. The word haunting was invented for the sound of this instrument. It's, it's very similar to the American native flutes of, of other parts of North America. Uh, it's very spiritual sound. You get a range of about an octave and a minor third. The flutes are generally part pentatonic, part diatonic. Uh, sometimes you have a little leather band that you can slide up and down the instruments to change the tonality of it, but we've given it to you as a in its in its original scale and also as a fully chromatic sustain instrument. The ocarina. 
The ocarina has been ubiquitous in South America for thousands of years. As incidentally, it has been in China for thousands of years. It's easy to wonder how the same instrument can develop in two places so far apart. Better ask Charles Darwin that one, I think. But these are, for the most part, clay instruments. They do not overblow, so they have a range of generally just over an octave. Uh, and what you lose in range, you gain in tone quality. They have a very, very broad sound. Again, it's a very haunting and melodic sound. They can be played chromatically, but generally speaking, that they are, they are either diatonic or in some way pentatonic. We've tried to remain pretty faithful to the, the scales that these instruments uh, were made in. We think we've given you a good variety of, of pitches and timbres. The lowest pitched ocarina we have here is a beautiful instrument that I call the Sun and Moon Ocarina, which was very kindly brought back from Chile for me by Mauricio. And it's absolutely enormous and has a very wide stretch for the fingers, so it, it's actually quite hard to play. But it's such a beautiful thing, I'm just so careful whenever I pick it up and put it down because. You drop that on the floor and it's goodbye. And I don't want that to happen. Aztec flower flute. Now, 
these flutes exist in a large number of different sizes and because they're not ensemble instruments, the pitch they come in is, is pretty much random. But if I could define it, it would be an Aztec recorder made by an ocarina maker because they're made from clay. They have that in common with the ocarina and they don't overblow, although it is possible to get some higher pitched notes out of them depending on the instrument. But it has a range of about an octave and again, like all instruments that don't overblow, they have a very, very pure sound. And this one we have given to you chromatic as a sustain and we've stuck to the original tonality of the instrument for the legato. 